RVers on social media would have you believing that RVing is all rainbows and butterflies. Isn't it? No, it's really not. Lies! It's all lies! lies. Okay. This week is my turn to pick the video topic. Yeah, we started this thing a few weeks ago where she picks a topic, I pick a topic, <laughs> and this week I just think it's ridiculous. Mercedes loves these dramatic, yeah. sensationalist videos. Oh, yeah. And I think there might be two of the ten that I agree with. Whatever. But I guess it's everyone's perception, right? So it's her turn. All right, so since it is my turn, make sure you guys like and subscribe and say really nice things in the comments. In fact, please say best video ever. If I could have like a hundred of you guys say best video ever in the comments that would be amazing by the way my video is double what hers was when we started this whole thing so we'll see how it goes nobody likes a bragger but seriously though i'm trying to do a video on things about rv life that you don't see past social media right it's really easy to take a really pretty picture and be like oh this is my life but what's it really like day in and day out right because it's not all roses and sunshine so let's start with the first lie about rv life oh, God. okay so you know they say it'll bring you family like closer together right well be careful what you ask for and watch the company you keep <laughs> i love my family i love my family so i guess it's a perception thing guys <laughs> no but seriously sometimes alone time is like a good thing. So make sure you carve out your alone time. It is really important and good to spend time with your family. But I don't think we highlight enough how much like people will really get on your nerves no matter how much you love them. And it, it really is about perception because I've get kind of getting a do over in life with my kids. I love every minute I spend with my kids. So I guess the point that Mercedes is trying to make is, is that you may w think you want to be with your family 24 seven in 150 square feet, but just think really close about it. I love it. I love being with my family. I don't miss a moment with my daughter as she grows up. And I didn't get that the first time around. The next lie about RV life is that, oh, the poop pipe isn't that bad. And you know what? It's not that bad if you're not the one doing it. She's never done the poop pipe once. In yeah. two and a half years, she's never done the poop pipe. Nope. Now with that said, it's gross. I did not like the poop pipe when I started. I gag over really nasty smells. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you do get used to it. It took me about a year to 18 months. I actually don't need gloves anymore when I do my poop pipe. But don't act like you like it. It's still gross. No, it, well, it's not as bad as it used to be. Okay, okay. See, he kind of agrees a little bit. Not really. <laughs> the next lie about RV life is about how wonderful the connection to mother nature is gonna be. Like you're gonna be with bears and birds and butterflies, but the truth is you're also gonna be with like mosquitoes and you know, not good wildlife. And the other thing is that that's when you are in nature. You're not always gonna be in nature. A lot of these RV parks are like not in nature. You'll be lucky if you have a tree on your site. I love nature. I've been with bears, I've been with butterflies, and I've been, what was the other thing you oh, said? Oh, he, he loves cows. That's yeah. like his new thing yeah, right now. A bull. It's, a, it's bull a bull named Yankee. It's a bull. If you know, you know, which by the way, you should sign up for our newsletter so you can know all the happenings with John and his bull Yankee. And the other animal that we don't talk enough about are like the mice and the bugs, right? Because they like crawling in the RV too. So yeah, you'll connect with nature, but it may not be the nature you want to connect with. The next lie about RV life is how expensive it can really be. Like, you know, we're bringing our own accommodations. I'm bringing my own toilet, my own bed. You would think that like I have everything I need, right? No, you're not done just because you bought the RV. There's still a lot more gear that you need. Even finding a place to park can be expensive. Even places to park where you don't have any hookups can cost you a lot. So this is something that I think is not addressed enough, how expensive RVing really is. It's not a thousand dollars a month, people, and it's not cheap. This is the one I'll have to agree with Mercedes on, guys. You never really think about how expensive the RV lifestyle is gonna be. Most people, think or assume that it's a lot cheaper than living in a rental or a house. It should be cheaper. It, it doesn't, that doesn't make it necessarily true. We spend just as much money monthly on our RV lifestyle as we did when we were living in a house. Yeah. So whatever you think your budget is, add 25% to mm -hmm. that, guys, because it's not going to be as inexpensive as you think it would be. That's good advice. The next one, and back me up in the comments, people, are command strips. Command strips are a lie, a lie that I fell for hook, line, and sinker, and here's why. 
because the truth about command strips is that they are really good if you put something on it that weighs 0, 0.000 pounds, right? Just because it says like 10 pounds, they're lying. It's all command strips. They're all liars. They're all liars. Liar, liar, pants on fire. They are liar, liar, pants on fires. Because what's going to happen is that the wallpaper will pull off. So unfortunately, you really need to screw in hooks to the wall. And you really need to have someone like that knows what they're doing that doesn't damage anything. And you don't want the screws to be too long because our V's are like paper thin. So like command strips, they're just a lie, a total lie. Command strips work fine if you stick them in the right place. I warned Mercedes, don't stick them to the walls where the wallpaper was. It bubbles it, it does pull it off. Mm -hmm. But there are places the command strips work fine. Yeah. But now that Mercedes has tore half the wallpaper off in our RV, now yeah. she doesn't like them. Well, they're fine if you hang a paper clip. <laughs> the command strip people are gonna come for us. Okay, the next one, the next lie about full-time RVing <laughs> is that pull-through doesn't necessarily mean that it's an easy site. Like you would think it's an easy site, right? Because you just pull through, but that's not necessarily the You've case. You've never parked our rig once in your entire time. Silence. RV. <laughs> no, listen, and here's why. Because sometimes it's a pull-through site, but you've got to like do a really sharp turn to get into the pull-through site. And if you don't know what you're doing, like when I hear pull-through, I think it should be like super easy and like nobody should be around, like, you know, a lot of distance so I can't hurt anything. And some of these pull-through sites that are supposed to be easy are like, really really tight curves that thank goodness you're the one parking because I would hit everything said by someone who has never once parked our rig uh-uh not once no. she's never parked our rig I haven't and you know what in the two and a half years and the hundreds of parks that we've stayed at pull through sites are typically a lot easier to park in typically typically but not and always. we've only had one site and I believe it was in North Carolina where it was a very very tough turn for a pull through site just go slow guys when you're parking your rig get out of the truck look at three, four times if you have to. Backup cameras help a lot. Yeah. Pull through sites are generally easier generally. than back in sites. But not always. But not in this video. <laughs> You're such a poop. Whatever. God, just hurry up and get this over with. God I'm... help me. This is ridiculous. All right. You've never done poop pipes. You've never parked the rig, I'm and yet these are all lies. These are lies. Sensationalist drama lies. I'm speaking on your behalf. I'm the creator you. of every thumbnail we've ever made, guys. Just well, a heads up. Every good thumbnail. Yeah. Next okay. week's my video. Yeah. It's Next gonna week be is so boring. my video. Yeah. It's going to be so boring. No, end times. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get into it. Survival. Yeah. Yeah. Prepare. Yeah. And go ahead, sir. All right, the next lie about RV life, and I don't know how this information got out there, but like so many people are so concerned about getting a good deal on the RV itself that they neglect a really important aspect, and that is who's going to service your and RV. This is true. See, there you go, because here is, here's the deal. Like you're shopping dealerships, right? And this one dealership will save you $3,000, let's say on the purchase price of an RV. It sounds like a great deal, right? Well, what if they can't service your RV and then for nine months out of the year, you can't use the RV? Wouldn't it have been better to pay a little bit extra but actually be able to use it and actually get the RV serviced? So I think the lie is focusing so much on the purchase price when that's really such a small segment of your RV life cycle. What you really want is somebody that you can trust that'll deliver quality service and that through the like ups and downs of your RVing journey will have your back. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to agree with Mercedes 100% on this one. There's nothing worse than buying a brand new RV. Yeah, you save 3,000 bucks, but then they have it for a month and a half, for two months. We have somebody from Oregon that they, they had their rig in service for three months right now. Is yeah. it really worth it? I think the other piece too is like you're gonna have to learn how to do a lot of this stuff on your own and it's not I understand look that the supply chain is all messed up and it's really hard to come by parts and so that's okay when things are just not working but you still want a dealership that'll keep in contact with you and say hey we're still waiting on the part we're still waiting on the part the next lie about RV God. living is that like you need to pick the right floor plan right okay so here's the unfortunate truth the unfortunate truth is that chances are the first RV that you pick is not going to be your last RV. So you have plenty of time to like make mistakes, pick the wrong floor plan, you'll figure out what you like later. 
it's like 10 times more important to make sure that you have like really good insurance on your RV, make sure that you have somebody that can properly service your RV than it is to like, oh, I need two bathrooms. Like you don't really need two bathrooms. You really don't need two How bathrooms. How many people are really going to be like in Unless your RV? Unless somebody in your family really stinks. Yeah, then you do need two bathrooms. <laughs> but, but seriously, it's like we have all these ideas on like what we think we need. But you really don't know until you're actually using the RV and how you use it will change. If you're a weekend warrior, you'll put Something up different. with different things than if you're full time. So like focus less on the floor plan and more on like the safety gear, the insurance, like the stuff that you really need when things hit the fan. Fact. Most RVers take about three RVs till they find the plan they're really comfortable with guys and that's just the truth mm -hmm. so don't focus so much on floor plan yeah ultimately what you need is experience living in it you think you know how you're going to live this lifestyle whether it's part-time or full-time but ultimately you're not going to know till you know till you practice yeah yep so spend as little money as possible on your first rig i would suggest never buy new yeah you know and then figure it out yeah because experience is unfortunately life's best teacher. Yep. The next lie about RV living is that it's freedom, independence, and adventure. When the reality is, is that it's also a lot of scheduling, planning, and organization. But it is also freedom, independence, and adventure. This is what I'm talking about. It drives me absolutely insane, right? Mercedes likes drama. She likes these sensationalist titles. But this, this lifestyle is freedom, independence, and adventure for me. It uh, well, is. until we bought the campground, and I'm, now I'm adjusting, trying to figure out my way, <laughs> and my freedom's a little bit gone. But yeah, it's definitely an adventure. It's a still. lot of fun. It's a it's a huge adventure, and yeah. so you would think if you watch our videos, Mercedes hates this lifestyle. No, I really don't. I can assure you, she does not hate this lifestyle. If if I was to pass away tomorrow, Mercedes would get a small Class C. She even knows the one she would look at a Forester. Yeah. By Forest River, I think it's 21 foot. That's yeah. the perfect rig for her. Yeah. So even though Mercedes comes up with these sensationalist, dramatic videos, right? Because it does. It, it does help us move videos. It gets yeah. gets us views, right? More interesting. She's really good at it. She 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 is the thumbnail master of the universe. These are all her she, ideas. She, She's got the brains and the looks. Yeah. Just but the saying. what was I saying? <laughs> well, but the bottom line is I actually like RVing. Hmm. <laughs> but the bottom line is she loves RVing, okay? But let me explain and she loves point. me. No matter what you think, she loves she loves living with me. Yeah. Who everybody. wouldn't love living with me? Exactly. I'm just using him for sex, people. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, no, seriously though, on a serious note. In today's day and age, with so many people RVing, you have to have some scheduling or some idea about you. The whole willy-nilly, you're just hitting the road, got good music, you're going to hit Route 66 and you'll just stop wherever you stop and you're just free and adventure, kind of like We've that. had those moments. Well, we've had those moments. Of but, course we've had those moments. But, but it, they're coming harder and harder to come by not really babe. because that's of the life up and down through it because of the difficulty of finding an rv spot you just if you're gonna do the willy-nilly thing you better be independent as far as like power and utilities go you better be able to boondock wherever if you're gonna be a willy-nilly freedom like do whatever kind of thing otherwise you do need to have a plan and you do need to schedule things out especially in peak RVing months I think it's a perspective thing obviously you guys know there's a little bit of an age gap between us and I love and appreciate the moments the hard times make the sweeter moments sweeter there you right go. And we do have a lot of freedom, independence, and adventure. We also have some struggles. Yeah. It's not all one thing or the other. That's life, right? Mm -hmm. The grass always seems greener, but is it really? Yeah. And the truth is, no, it's not. I love my RV lifestyle. I love freedom, independence, and adventure. And this is what this, this what, that's exactly what this type of lifestyle has given me my love. The next lie about RVing is this laptop life. Okay, there's kind of this idea out there that all you need is your laptop and you can work from wherever and you can just find this remote job and you'll just RV the country and, and your laptop will always be like in a beautiful mountainscape. Like you'll be chilling by the Grand Canyon with your laptop and like working at the office there or you'll be like at the beach and with sand in your toes with your laptop and you'll be like, you know, doing And you doing will, office sometimes, work. not all the time. Very rarely. I mean, sand is horrible for laptops. <laughs> like it's really not That's realistic true. when you really think about it and to get to those beautiful scenic views you normally have to like climb there so what are you gonna do you're gonna have like your mountain climbing stuff along with your laptop guess what you won't have any service there so it's not really realistic typically at the places where if you are gonna do the laptop life you're gonna work nomadically like that 
you kind of need to have connection and, and sometimes the more beautiful places have less internet than the less beautiful places. And I think it's all about attitude, guys. I could be sitting at a dump with the right attitude and still That's enjoying true. what I'm doing. True that. So once again, I'm gonna disagree with you on this. Yes, do we, are we sitting in the beach or in the woods with wildlife while we're working? No, but yeah. do we have moments that we do do that? Yeah. Yes, of course we do. Yeah. And those are wonderful moments. Yeah. I just think- Unless there's mosquitoes. Unless there's mosquitoes, there you go. <laughs> No, we just, we have a responsibility. We have so many RVers that look to us and say, hey, you guys motivated me to, you know, sell my house and go RVing. And I immediately say, don't blame us. Exactly. Don't you blame us. We give all sides of the spectrum. Exactly. And if, if somebody you loved very dearly, like you're a child, was asking you advice on something, what would you tell them, right? You'd tell them like the high part about it, the wonderful part about it, but you'd also warn them of like the lows. So that is my intention here is just to give you like the full spectrum so you can walk into RV life with your eyes wide open. And this is one of the very few things that I'm going to completely agree with Mercedes on. The very few. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you would look at her and think that she has no fun in RV life by our thumbnails and these dramatic, yeah. you know, sensational oh, um, ideas fun. that you come up with. Yeah, and, and, and obviously our audience loves your, some of, some of our audience loves your video ideas. There's people out there that actually think that if they sell all this stuff, buy an RV, that they're going to live happily ever after. And there's no such thing. Yep. It'll be fun for a while, then it'll just slowly become normal. And then it'll suck, and then it'll be fun again. Yeah. It just depends on the day and the time. Yeah, and your attitude. You bring yourself wherever you go, guys. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter what type of lifestyle, what type of home, what type of car you drive. Yeah. You're with you wherever you go. So you got to clean this stuff up, Yeah. and the rest of that will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. We've been RVing so long now, it's just normal. Yeah. You know, the first six months were a honeymoon. We had, oh, it was incredible. Yeah, adventure. But it's slowly does just become life we love the lifestyle we don't have any plans on quitting it no um but we do feel it's very very important to give a view of all sides of it and remember to be fair our audiences are my age and up yeah you that's have our an audience. advantage so that's why okay. you gotta say nice things right. about my video because he has an advantage well mercedes videos are usually sensational they're very dramatic she does all she designs all of our thumbnails right and I take a lot of the heat for this, but she's a genius. She's not only beautiful, she's extremely smart. God gave her the brains and the smarts. Mm. But I don't like a lot of her video ideas because I just don't think they're a great value proposition for people like me. Okay, I don't like a lot of drama and sensationalism. You I'd rather what? just get into the just the facts. Uh uh, because men gossip just as much, if not more, than women. Bull. So guys, don't act like y'all don't. Whatever, you know all the drama. Fifty-five year old man to a thirty-five-year-old woman. No, you think there's gonna be? Uh, guys, I don't think guys, so. Guys are into the older drama. you get, the less drama you like, honey. Well, well, okay, the less you like drama in your life, but you're still <laughs> interested in drama in other people's I'm lives. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not interested in that. Just you like the bit. Kardashians. I mean, I'm not interested in the Kardashians. I don't care what people do in their lives. I don't care what they're doing and who they're dating and what they're eating. I don't care. And what they're eating. What I care about is what I'm doing. All right. Well, please say nice things about my video. Because <laughs> I need a win. So in the next video, I want to preemptively apologize because unfortunately, John is picking next <laughs> week's video. So, you know, it's probably going to be something survivalist or, you know, manly man. Yeah. So that's why it's so important that you like, subscribe and say nice comments to this video so I can win. And then don't worry because the following week, I'll come up with something genius yet again.